What's up guys and welcome to another cold, wet day here in Utah. I'll tell you what, I could not have picked a better time to start working on all this stuff, to have the car up on the jack stands for three weeks or so, because for like the past two weeks, it's either been rainy, snowy, cold, rainy, snowy, and cold, rainy or snowy, or some kind of mixture of all three of those things that would have prevented me from driving the car anyways. And so today, we're gonna move on to part two, and that's gonna be basically cleaning all this stuff up and getting all the old bushings out and preparing it for paint and for the new bushings to go in and for the, also the reinforcement plates to be welded onto the rear of the subframe. I did get some car parts in, so why don't we go over those? I actually kind of forgot what's in here, so let's check it out. Looks like, okay, yeah. So this is weird. I did not have the little strut tower reinforcement plates for the rears. I had no idea. You definitely need these if you have an E36. I found that out when I was taking those struts off, so I ordered them. And these things here are the new studs for the front mounts of the subframe. They go in right here and there. In the last episode, I saw that mine were super, super rusty and I did not want to put those back in the car. So I ordered some nice new fresh ones. The last thing that we have in each of these boxes are just the new end links. Because like I said in the last one, the rubber in mine was really worn out and stuff and also my end links were bent. Why don't we get on to cleaning this stuff out and kind of assessing the damage. Okay, time for a little update. Let me show you guys kind of what I found here. First of all, you can see a lot better in here. You see all those cracks and stuff around the edges? Same thing on that bushing there, like right in here. These bushings are old, they're pretty messed up, and they're flaking off into pieces as I was trying to brush and things around. Oh my gosh, those are so cracked in here. This one's like almost torn out. This is a lot worse than I thought it was gonna be. Oh my gosh. Now for the rust. There's actually a lot more of it than I expected. It's all pretty much around the edges and none of it is deep. It's basically just like surface rust and stuff. But it is kind of all over the place. Man, yeah, it's especially bad all around this casing in here. I'm gonna get a wire wheel with a drill and really clean this off super good after we burn these bushings out. I noticed that I kind of already have reinforcement plates welded on here, but they're not very big and I don't feel like they're that strong, so I'm gonna cut those off to the AKG ones that I already have that I showed you guys last time. So I think it's about time we start burning out these nasty, cracked, crappy bushings. And honestly, this is a pretty fun part because we get to play with fire. There we go. All right, let's try not to burn this whole place down. I have the rubber burnt out, and that one, that one, the differential bushing, and that one, just one more to go in the subframe. Oh. <laughs> all right guys, so as you can see, I have all the bushings in the subframe at least burnt out, and I was actually having a pretty hard time with this. It was just taking forever, so. I definitely owe Powin from his uh, YouTube channel, Powinning, <laughs> a, a big thank you because he gave me some tips that made this go a lot faster. So click up here and check that out, or the link's in the description. Anyways. Basically what ended up working out the best is just keeping the flame central towards the bushing so that these metal pieces on the inside burn out. Once those things burn out, then the flame can burn a lot faster and get these bushings out. There's also metal that goes along the outside. As you can see, I've tried to pop this out already as it goes. So how we're gonna get the rest of these out on all the bushings is just by basically using this hacksaw and uh, sawing out the ring a little bit, and then once it goes through, we can hammer it out and bend it so that it will come out of the subframe. So on to that now. Oh! Yes! <laughs> One out, a bunch more to go. There is a uh, number two. Number three. Oh. Just like that, we're finally done with all the bushings on this subframe. We still have a couple more things to do as far as differential bushings go, and that is there's two more on the differential, one here and one there. You see that? No bushing there, bushing there. So what I ended up doing was taking this drill and drilling out all the rubber in between the two pieces of metal here, 
And then once I got that out, I just got a screwdriver, wedged it between there, and uh, pried out the outside diameter of the bushing. Here's the old one so you can kind of see what I'm talking about with me kind of prying this thing out. Woo! Positives, we have every single one of the differential bushings out and every single one of the subframe bushings out. Negatives, it's getting dark, see you tomorrow. Positive, it's a new day, we're here back at the shop and I'm really, really motivated to get this stuff done. Let me show you guys everything that I have that we're gonna use to clean up the subframe and everything else. So I have a bunch of wire wheels that I'm gonna put onto this drill. I also bought one of these polycarbide ones to see if it works better than those. I've never used one of these before, so I guess we'll find out. I also have a wire brush, one of these sanding pads, and then I have a whole pack of different types of sandpaper. So here we go. This thing is doing a pretty good job here. As you can tell, a lot of that rust is gone. It's just a long, slow process, and there's a lot to do on here. I really don't need to get every single speck of dust off because the paint that I'm gonna be using is like a rust inhibiting paint. So as long as we have the majority of the flaky stuff off, we're gonna be golden. So I'm gonna continue to work on that, and I'll give you guys an update once that's all done so you can see what it looks like. You can see here that basically all of the places that had really thick rust, like even down inside here, I sanded that all off so it's not really crusty and has a lot of changes in, in height and depth from the rust. So the next thing that I think is on the agenda of stuff we're gonna do is to clean the diff up and basically do the same thing to the differential that we just did to the subframe. And this one's gonna be really satisfying to watch because it is super dirty, so check this out. So the diff cleaned up pretty well, as you guys saw. There's like a bunch of fur came off this thing. It's pretty freaking gross. If you look close, there's like a little bit of rust here, a little bit of rust there. There's just really a few spots and the diff is not bad at all. I'm gonna blast this thing with some uh, brake cleaner and then scrub it all off. And then this thing, after I sand it a little bit, will be ready for paint. This is aluminum, it's not gonna rust, so I'm not gonna worry about painting it. But look how good the paint turned out on the body of the diff. This thing looks like it's brand freaking new. You guys know that I don't have electricity at my storage unit, so I'm out here hanging out with my friend Jack. He's doing a video on his YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description. This trim right here is all chrome, but he's doing it with super wrap, so it's glossy black. That'll look sick. If you're curious to see what that's gonna look like, go check out his channel. But anyways, I'm plugged into his electricity here. I got a little cutoff wheel that I'm gonna use to cut off these mounting tabs that I mentioned before. These little reinforcement plates that are too small for me, so I'm gonna chop them off when we put on the big AKG ones. Woo. If it seems like we are all over the place in today's episode, it's because we are. <laughs> First we were at my unit, and then we went over to Jack's house, and now we're here at my buddy Chase's house where my friend Riley is gonna use his welder. Well, with the subframe finally reinforced and all cleaned up, it is about time that we paint this thing. This is really the last big step that we have to do until we can put the bushings and everything back together and back in the car. And, oh, man, thumbs up if you guys are excited to see how this thing drives once it's all back in there because I'm really looking forward to the first drive. Gosh, this thing looks so good. The whole thing with prepping this thing for paint and getting all the rust off was definitely a long process, but seeing how clean this thing looks once it's all freshly painted and it has all the reinforcements on and everything, definitely made it worth it. I can't wait to put this thing in the car. That was just like a matte finish primer. We're gonna put on a satin finish that's just a fresh, nice coat of paint, so it's gonna be looking all Hollywood. So if you guys wanna see what that finished product looks like, if you guys can't wait for me to put the bushings in there and get everything back in the car, make sure to stay tuned and make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to the channel, as well as the notification bell next to it so that you guys don't miss an episode. We're gonna be tackling that pretty quick because I'm getting impatient with this stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys enjoyed the video, if you guys are enjoying this whole series, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.
596, 583.